Hello, my name is William Eccles, and today I'll be going over uh, calculating distance and time from a VOR station. So, to begin with, uh, there's two major components of a uh, VOR and how they work. Uh, the first one uh, would be ground based navigation, or the ground station, I should say. Uh, I'll get to that here in a second. And the second one would be uh, systems and components in the aircraft, being the antennas the uh, frequency selector, and the uh, various instruments that we could use. So back to uh, the ground station, how they, uh, a simple way of explaining how they work. Uh, there's two frequencies that the uh, ground station sends out. Uh, the first one would be a uh, kind of a, uh, uh, like a radar circle, uh, or a sonar uh, sweeping. Uh, and a, uh, the second one would be a beacon, beacon light flashing, and the aircraft is able to, uh, with its antennas and instruments, to pinpoint when uh, both of those two frequencies meet, and it's able to uh, precisely figure out what radial is the uh, aircraft is on to the VOR. So now that we uh, talk a little about uh, how VORs work, let's uh, jump into a question. So while maintaining a uh, magnetic heading of 270 and true airspeed of 120 knots, the radial 360, 360, 360 my bad, of a VOR is crossed at uh, 1437 and a radial 350 is crossed at 1444. Sorry, uh, 1444. That's a better way to put it. So let's find the approximate time and distance to the station. So let's write down our uh, knowns of what we got. So we have a uh, heading of 270. So I would like for you guys to also write down uh, as we go along. So a heading of two, uh, 270 for our first known. Uh, our uh, second known would be a uh, true airspeed is uh, 120 knots. Uh, third known would be uh, our time, the time that it take to that it took to get from 360 to 350 is uh, sorry is seven minutes. So seven minutes. And uh, our uh, fourth would be uh, the difference between 360 and 350, and which would be 10. So there's a very simple equation on, uh, or, uh, for us to use. So let's, uh, so we're trying to figure out distance to the station first. So distance to the station equals, oh, first let me, uh, let me explain a little bit something about this equation. So it's, it's a rule of thumb that uh, for uh, one degree equals one nautical mile at six, at uh, 16 uh, nautical miles out from a nav aid. So uh, if you are 60 miles out, nautical miles out from a uh, nav station, uh, one uh, degree, the radial, uh, will equal one nautical mile. So that 60 will come in later for our equation. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, distance flown. We can uh, calculate that real quick uh, with uh, 120 knots and seven minutes. That's uh, 14 nautical miles right there. So we can do 14 uh, on top times 60 knots. So that's all on top. We're going to be using a uh, a uh, dividing symbol. And uh, on bottom uh, would be our uh, degree bearing change. So 10 would be on the bottom. So it would be 14 times 60 divided by 10. So let's uh, give that a quick calculation. 
divided by 10 would equal around 84 nautical miles. So uh, now we can calculate uh, the time. So we have 84. Uh, it should take us uh, 42 minutes to uh, get to our station. So it's 84 nautical miles and uh, 42 minutes. So there are, there's other ways to do this uh, math in a, in, to be more precise. But uh, we're mainly going to see these uh, type of questions on uh, the knowledge exam. So, and for to use those other equations, uh, we'll need to uh, understand and know how to figure out a sine. That's a big, big one. And uh, I'm not too sure if you can calculate that in your uh, mental math. I'm not too sure, but because uh, I've always used a calculator. And you're not allowed to take uh, large processing calculators like that into the exams. So, uh, the equation that the FAA gave us is a lot more uh, practical, if you will. So, yep, uh, we've obtained our uh, distance and time from the VOR station, which is 84 nautical miles and should take 42 minutes to get there. Uh, thank you.